Hello. I'm Walter. Maud let me out tonight. My real name is Bill Macy, and I've got a secret. From Hollywood, the show that reveals all, I've got a secret. And now let's meet the star of I've Got a Secret, Steve Allen. Few little rope tricks to get our show off the ground. Howdy and welcome again to I've Got a Secret. Tonight's panelists are a remarkable group of funny ladies, <laughs> one of the world's greatest laughers herself, Miss Pat Carroll, Absolutely. the formidable secretaire, Mr. Henry Morgan, tonight's special guest panelist, the lovely TV star June Lockhart, Thank you very much. and that clever, clever gentleman, the life of the repartee, Richard Dawson. <laughs> <laughs> ah. the panel. Now let's see if we can find a guest to match our panel. Here we go. <laughs> Gentleman walks out and without even being asked, he puts a little <laughs> of corn clives on the table there. What is your name, sir? Charles Gramlich. Gramlich. And what do you do, Mr. Gramlich? I'm city manager at McAllister, Oklahoma. City manager, McAllister, Oklahoma. Now what have you brought us here? Oh, that's just some corn, but I, uh, Give it to pigeons for reasons other than nutrition. Gives this corn to pigeons, panel, for reasons other than nutrition. If you'll whisper the details of your secret to me, Mr. Gramlich, we'll let the audience know what this corn does. <laughs> All right, panel, as we've told you, we're looking here for something the corn does for pigeons besides providing nourishment. And we'll start the game with Richard Dawson. Charlie, uh, may I call you Charlie? Certainly. Well, all right then, Charlie. <laughs> uh, was I knew were pigeons a problem in Oklahoma? Where you were, where you're from? Yes. Pigeons? Mm -hmm. Messing and staining buildings and... That's dirty right. little devils, aren't they? <laughs> Would the... Uh, the corn that you give them, is it a special kind of corn that would sort of, how can I put this delicate? I don't, think it's, <laughs> I don't think it's necessary and the answer is no. <laughs> One for Steve. <laughs> Has anyone good. ever thought of that though? That's a good idea, isn't it? Yeah. All right. Thank you, Richard. Uh, is it to make, oh, did a buzzer go off? I think so, yes. Well, just a second. Even if it hasn't, I shall withdraw. <laughs> <laughs> Yes. Oh, is it me? I'm sorry, Mr. Gramlich. Um, it, uh, uh, this uh, feed, is it for, uh, say, extra fertility? <laughs> extra? No. no. Uh, now, pigeons are known for other things than just, uh, they are known to carry messages. Oh, yeah, that's... Would this be for extra speed, like jet? <laughs> Well, I mean, like Jeff Pigeons or something. <laughs> Takes carbons. <laughs> well, Steve, if you'd shake on your head, I thought they were bright questions. <laughs> That's what you thought, Pat. Right. Yeah. You got another thing coming. So. <laughs> no, just joking. <laughs> I was wool gathering, actually. Henry Moore. <laughs> uh, Mr. Gavin, I'd like to go back to something that uh, Richard was about to attack. <laughs> oh. He said, were pigeons a problem? And I think you said, yes, they were? Mm -hmm. Yes. Well, I'll bet you this, th th we'll say that these, you wouldn't feed these things to kill the pigeons. No. 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 <laughs> you better not. Would they <laughs> reverse what Pat was talking about? Would they cut down on their fertility? Yes. That's, that's oh. exactly oh. it. Oh. Yeah. Oh. Good. Good. See? Yeah. The corn, in other words, is used as birth control pills for pigeons. <laughs> that shows you the difference between an optimist and a pessimist. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Grumman. <laughs> we'll see if we can get some idea now of the dimensions of your problem. How big is McAllister? About 19,000 people and about 8,000 pigeons. <laughs> <laughs> I can see how they would have had you outnumbered soon if you hadn't done something. Now, how did you get involved with this Planned Parenthood for Pigeons thing? Well, they, um, you know, they were a problem, as, uh, as the panel said, and mm -hmm. we used to have a uh, annual pigeon shoot, and a lot of people complained about it, so we tried to find a more humane way of controlling the flock. 
Have you have you gotten interest from other cities? Because New York has a big oh, problem. From all across the, the country and England and. How do you get the lady pigeons to take their pills, so to speak? <laughs> well, we just scattered on the rooftop. Use so, whips. <laughs> you just throw it on the roof. Right. Let that be a hint for you ladies. So, <laughs> uh, this is the How corn. It, oh, sorry, it? Is the corn then uh, treated after it's grown with something which sort of makes them sort of doze well. off if they don't? <laughs> um, no, they don't. Why don't you wake They don't off. They fall off. <laughs> When they get up, they're no good for anything. <laughs> yeah, that's... <laughs> well, it's some, it's some chemical... Right, they're just chemically treated. I see. What do you care if you're not a pigeon? <laughs> the whole question thing here is ridiculous. Well, uh, thank you so much, Mr. Pigeon... Uh, Mr. Uh, Gramlick, and good luck to our friends and yours in Oklahoma. Thank you Enjoy very much. Enjoy it. Uh, 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 will continue in just one minute. <laughs> now let's meet tonight's next contestant. <laughs> Can you tell the ladies and gentlemen of the panel your name? My name is Frank Zane. And where do you live, Mr. Zane? Santa Monica, California. Uh, I'll tell you additionally, panel, that Mr. Zane teaches mathematics at Mark Twain Junior High, the first thing he teaches them is how to Mark Twain, which is an interesting <laughs> thing. For a, I'm sorry about what my mouth said. Anyway, he is very well known in an entirely different uh, field as the winner of an international competition. So if you'll whisper your secret to me, Mr. Zane, we'll let the audience know what it is. Mr. Zane's secret concerns, I'll tell you again, an international competition in which he won his title. We'll start the questioning with June Lockhart. Well, did this international competition, Mr. Twain, take place in Germany? No, it didn't. Oh. It's Mr. Zane. Uh, what did I say, Mr. Twain? <laughs> <laughs> uh, they're so Remember the Twain shows. All right. Uh, let's see. Um, is it a, a, of an athletic uh, an, uh, nature? Yes, but it's more of a science, you might say. Science. Oh, does it have to do with, uh, is it a game? Not exactly, but in a way it is. So it's not like chess, for instance? No. All right. Um, do you do this with uh, other people? Do, they, do you compete with other people? Or, yes. Oh, I see. Not with yourself, in other words. No. Good. <laughs> Richard. Uh, Mark. Uh, oh, no. Sorry. Twain. Frank. Is that right? Yes. Mr. Gray. I noticed that you have like about a 44-inch bicep. Are you wearing that for a friend, or is that your physique? <laughs> <laughs> Santa Monica is like full of those gentlemen who kick sand in your face and things. <laughs> and I love it. <laughs> Are you a, were you a Mr. America? Were you Mr. America? I was. Was that the title that you won? No. No. But you're very Did you close. win Miss America? <laughs> <laughs> now cut that. I won her last year. She was nothing. <laughs> Uh, was it Mr. Universe, did you? Yes. Yeah. 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 <laughs> While we uh, get some information from Mr. Zane, it has been uh, suggested that he uh, show us uh, the oh, wherewithal. Oh, yes, take it off, take it off. I hadn't thought we would put it in just that way. I'll put this microphone over near your mouth there, Mr. Zane, so we can hear whatever answers might occur to you. By his mouth? You teach, uh, <laughs> you teach bodybuilding as well as math, do you? Yes, I have uh, courses that I uh, do through the mail, uh, physical fitness and uh, body development courses for men, women, and children. Mm -hmm. Richard, in case you ever would like to have a physical fit, now you know how you can... Uh, well, I haven't been well. I, that's if right. I sent my ch children... Oh, you send them through the mail. He's got a blue chest. There it is. Oh, isn't that wonderful? Just another pretty face. <laughs> How much do you weigh, Mr. Zane? Uh, usually around 200, but right now about 190 because I'm not training for any competition, so I sort of slacking off a little now. You're off <laughs> your feed. <laughs> yeah, I'm, we got I'm some sure. stuff over there, some corn. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. <laughs> I understand that your wife also uh, won a title, huh? Yes, yeah, she's Miss Universe Bikini. 
Well, then why are we standing here? I see. Um, How do you two stay me, in such uh, good shape, so to speak? Well, we both work out with weights, and we follow a special diet, high in protein and low in refined food. Mm -hmm. And we do some running, Jogging. too. And your first name is? Christine. Christine. What is your particular uh, philosophical goal in life, Christine? Well, I'd like to be a well-balanced person, not only physically, but mentally and emotionally. Here, here. Well, if you want to be as capable physically as you are, I mean, mentally as you are physically, you're going to be the smartest woman in the world. I can see that. Well, thank you both very much for joining us, and continued good luck to you in your endeavors. Thank you very much. Mr. and Mrs. Hicks. We'll be back with our guest star, Bill Macy, right after these messages. Now let's meet tonight's celebrity who co-stars with Beatrice Arthur on that very funny show, Maud. Here is Mr. Bill Macy. Nice to have you with us, Bill. As you can see by the empty chairs there, we've sent the panel off to our soundproof room so that you can explain your secret. Now, what are you up to here? Well, you see, what I'm doing is, as a bachelor, I do some cooking occasionally, and tonight... I'm showing you how to cook on ice. Yes, now we're going to get a close-up with this camera here in just a moment or two to show you that we mean literally what Bill says here. You see, it's a brand new kind of range that stays cool on top, and they call it the cool heat range. Cool heat range. Uh, if that, as soon as that picture is uh, ready, just take it. That's it. Now here you see the frying pan with Bill's dish being right. prepared in it. And it uses magnetic induction to heat any metal powder pan that is set on it, but it doesn't heat the range the top or anything in between. Now, I'm using this piece of asbestos uh -huh. to protect the ice. Yeah, this is an actual piece of ice. You can see it dripping. From the pan as it heats up. Yeah. So we put the ice on that. Good. Now, you can see that the ice is melting a little bit, but the interesting thing is it's not melting from this. It's melting just from these from TV the lights. Of the, uh, the bottom of the pan. Well, actually, it isn't, believe it or not. It's, mel it's just melting from the heat of the room, because from this thing, it could just sit there all day. OK, now we're going to bring the panel out of the soundproof room. And while they're walking back to their chairs, by the way, Bill, we want to take just a moment. You can go right ahead and do that. Thank you. To congratulate you uh, in your remarkable performance as Walter Findlay, Maud's husband, on that terrific show. It's really one of the funniest shows of all time. Don't you folks Thank agree? You. Excuse me, Steve. The panel's on their way in. OK. Hi, panel. I guess you all know Bill Macy. Bill Macy, you all know our panel members. Bill is cooking, really cooking one of his... Uh, Sit, we're going to ask you to sit right down there, panel, because you're not supposed to be standing up and looking over here. I put my hand in front of it for just a moment. Very good. Bill is cooking one of his favorite dishes, eggs and onions, and we put this little kind of a fence on this side so you could not see anything much except uh, the top of the pan he's working with. His secret involves something that he has placed between the frying pan and the range top on which he is doing the cooking, and it is real cooking. We'll tip it up a little bit. There are really eggs and onions in there. We're not kidding you about that. Your job then, panel, is to tell us what the something is between the pan and the range, and we'll start the questioning with Pat Carroll. Uh, Bill, is it, is it some particular kind of material to regulate the heat? No. Uh, is it something that you would normally find in the kitchen? Yes. Uh, would it be like one of those little fly screen things that you put on top so the uh, spatter doesn't come out and you've put it on the bottom? No. <laughs> I see. Uh, is it uh, made of a, a wire or a metal material? No. <laughs> oh. Is it, is it a food? It's not usually considered food, although there's a loose sense in which it falls within the food family. Would it be like the big round Greek breads or Armenian breads? No, that's definitely food. Oh, yes. <laughs> Thank you, Pat. One down, three to go. Henry Morgan. Bill, th th this thing that you have between the pot and the fire, does it help in any way, the cooking? Actually not. <laughs> <laughs> well, let me put it a hard way. Is what you're doing sort of silly? It's, it's very unusual and therefore could be considered silly, yes. Thank you, Steve. Okay. Now, is this substance uh, ordinarily considered to be flammable? Oh, absolutely not. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> is it, now you said partly food. Um, could it be food in an unformed form, like, yes. say, flour, you know? Yes, but in this case it isn't. Yeah, I figured. <laughs> 
Thank you, Henry. June Locker. Bill, does your secret have something to do with uh, what is underneath what's between what you're cooking in and the range on which you're working? Yes, that's well, exactly what so, it does. No, I'm, what I'm trying to say is, is it the range that's different? Is it like a, a cold type of uh, uh, counter that uh, makes heat but there's not something which is flame? She's on the exact yes, right track. Yes, that's right. But we, right. what we want to know is what is between the range and the pen. An old Maud script. <laughs> <laughs> no. no. All right, well, let's see. Is it something, uh, is it cloth? No. Oh, no, no, uh, no. <laughs> Richard Dawson. Yeah. But that's the idea. Keep up the good work. All right. <laughs> you want me to take your turn? <laughs> Bill, is it uh, chemical? Like dry ice? Wow. You're in the neighborhood. Yes. Well, can I drop in if I... Yes, anytime you're around. Yeah. Wow. We're going to... Uh... It's, it's so close to dry ice that in the interest of running out of time, we'll assume that you, you got about a 99 on that. Bill's secret is that he was cooking atop a slab of regular ice. Oh, really? Yeah. Thank you, Bill. Here is the, uh, the ice, or what remains of it. Right. And as I said before, it's melting, not because there's any heat from this range top, because there is none. It's just melting from the lights here in the TV studio. This is a new device, a remarkable new range made by the Westinghouse people. It uses magnetic induction for heat. If you scientists out there know what I'm talking about. The range top stays cool, but the power heats the metal in the pots or pans, and that's how the food inside of the pots or pans ah. gets hot. So we put the ice on top of the range, and then we had this little piece of stuff here, which was simply designed to uh, protect the ice from the hot pan. That was all it was doing. Can we sample some of your uh, stuff there, Bill? Why don't you serve it to the panel? I would like to very much. So yes. Then, see, it's... you can put your fingers right on right, the uh, yeah. stove and yeah. it doesn't sure. burn or anything. It's That's a... right, yeah. And you it's a cold your... countertop then. Yeah. God will get you for that, That looks <laughs> absolutely <laughs> revolting. Oh, are you kidding? <laughs> well, I, what I, can I... you do with cornflakes? Now, listen, <laughs> I'm a bachelor. I can't, oh. I can't eat at Schwab's every day. You are a bachelor. No, you know, Bill, while they're having a little bite there, it just occurs to me, if this range only heats metal, in other words, it doesn't Thank heat you. the eggs or it doesn't heat the ice, it doesn't heat the paper Thank or anything you. else you might put on there, then you could literally sit on this range and cook with a frying pan in your lap, couldn't you? Mm. Would you like? Only once. <laughs> but I'm not going to try it. <laughs> <laughs> I bet Maud would try it if you were. Here. Anyway, it's a remarkable invention. We thank our friends at Westinghouse. And Bill, thank you for being our guest. Whoops. I've got a secret to turn after these words. <laughs> now let's get another contestant out here. Thank you. Would you tell the panel your name? My name is William Fenning. Mr. Fenning, where are you from? I'm from Los Angeles. All right. Mr. Fenning panel is an executive with a company whose ad in the yellow pages of the phone book, let me see if I have this straight here. Was upside down. Was upside down, uh, which would be hard to do your walking in the yellow page. Anyway, that's what it looks like. We have hidden part of it, as you may notice. We've hidden the company's name and function because the secret involves a company service supplied in connection with these buildings you see, or any other buildings for that matter. And now, Mr. Fenning, if you'll whisper your secret to me, we'll let the audience know what your company does. What was that? Nice. <laughs> the secret, as I say, involves a service applied in connection with the buildings you just saw, and we'll start the questioning with Richard. Yes, Mr. Fenning, uh, is your business clean buildings? Do I clean buildings? No, All right, sir. let me phrase it. Would you clean a building? <laughs> no, it, is that the service that you're... No, sir, not, no. not the service. It doesn't shampoo and clean up No, shampoo buildings. and no clean up. Does it buy old buildings and... Uh, no, Redecorate them? Hmm. Then your service doesn't interest me, Bill. <laughs> no, <laughs> is it a service that is very rare? Is it very specialized, or will we see it often in the yellow page? Uh, it's uh, quite specialized, but uh, it's done quite often. Happens almost every day, one place or another. Oh, well, I Thank wish you. you'd told me that earlier. I'm sorry, Richard. I can't tell you everything. Back, Carol. <laughs> Mr. Fenny, would your service have to do with the moving of buildings? No, my service has nothing to do with the moving of buildings. How about the tearing down of buildings? That's with it. Those huge... Ah! Ah! 
Very good. This is what the. Uh, this is what the entire. Whoop, <laughs> this is my day to drop a lot of You're stuff. You're a good wrecker yourself. Oh, right, I'm wrecking this whole program here. <laughs> he owns the Cleveland Wrecking Company, as you can see. They tear down buildings. I understand you also salvage a lot of uh, valuable materials, don't you? Right. We don't. I don't think we really wreck buildings. We help build new cities. But all the artifacts, all the beautiful things in these old buildings are saved. And the bricks and the steel and the doors from these old buildings are saved. So we don't. Don't just demolish old houses. And then do you sell them in garage sales when you're through? No, we have, we have salesmen that are at the job that sell the buildings, and then we bring the material, the other material, down to our yard and sell it. We really recycle almost everything. When you say that a salesman's there selling yeah. a building, let's suppose there's a, say, a 10-story tall building, a full city block. You mean somebody stands on the sidewalk saying, okay, what am I bidding? How do they sell a big building like that? <laughs> well, if it's a historic building, they can sometimes sell each brick. Oh, really? oh, it's all piecework, in other words. That's right. <laughs> now, the salesmen don't work for your firm, do they? Sir? Yes, they do. Oh, so you We sell. are paid a fee to demolish the building. Ah, right. Is yes, that, Henry? I wondered how you could sell the building if you didn't buy it originally, and I asked you if you bought it. I'm checking up, Bill. <laughs> you know, my mouth's been at three quarters open. I, <laughs> <laughs> no, I worry. When you go, isn't the sort of a, 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 the art of your business in going around to the building and seeing first what you could salvage? That's part of it, yes. We actually take the quantity of steel, the quantity of brick, the quantity of concrete, and figure the thing out as to each cost for each item, and that's how we demolish it, and then give credit for the salvage material that comes out. I got a, there's a personal kind of thing. Where does your money really come from, the fee for wrecking the building or for selling what you, what you salvage? If I tell you the whole thing, you're going to give up the program and come in the wrecking <laughs> business, and you've got too much competition. <laughs> And besides, Henry, after a few days, you'd be a wreck. We've run out of time, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very much, sir. And good luck to the Cleveland Wrecking Company and all you home wreckers all over America. Thank you, panel. Thank you all.